Good evening and welcome to this time of prayer and coming before God at the end of the day. My name is Vicky, I'm part of the team at St Thomas's Blackpool and this is just a quiet time really before going to bed that we're just being still before God. And if you want to have a candle lit for our time together or a cross in front of you or both, then please do feel free. The reading that I'm going to use is the one that's set in the lectionary for tonight from John's Gospel, John chapter 17, verses 1 to 5. Let's just be still now for a moment and just remember that God is with us wherever we are. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. And so as we come before the maker of heaven and earth, we submit to him the things of today. And so just in a, a moment of quiet, allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you and motivate you to turn back to God to say sorry I need to do that and I'm sure there may be things from today that you've thought said or done or left undone and you need to turn back to God and say I'm sorry I'm going to use the collect from last Sunday, from yesterday. Grant, we beseech you, merciful Lord, to your faithful people pardon and peace, that they may be cleansed from all their sins and serve you in a quiet mind. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Words of the Night Prayer Song Before the ending of the day, creator of the world, we pray that you with steadfast love would keep your watch around us while we sleep. From evil dreams defend our sight, from fears and terrors of the night. Tread underfoot our deadly foe, that we no sinful thought may know. O oh, Father, that we ask be done, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, and Holy Spirit, by whose breath our souls are raised to life from death. And so we turn to John's Gospel, chapter 17, reading verses 1 to 5. Jesus has been talking with his disciples. And now in this chapter, we hear Jesus pray. After Jesus said this, he looked towards heaven and prayed, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son, that your son may glorify you. For you granted him authority over all people, that he might give eternal life to all those you have given him. Now this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I have brought you glory on earth by finishing the work you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world began. This is the world, word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus prays. We know that the Gospels record many times Jesus praying. 
were told elsewhere that Jesus got up whilst it was still dark and found a space and time to be in prayer to God the Father. But the Gospel writers don't necessarily tell us what he prayed or how he prayed. Matthew 11 records words uh, and also um, words of praise in John 11 at Lazarus's tomb. But this whole chapter 17 of John's Gospel is Jesus praying. Now when we come upon someone who is praying, our natural reaction is to pause and wait. For this is something to be observed with, with reverence. There is an intimacy about prayer, and even more so here, as Jesus, God the Son, speaks to God the Father. How wonderful that here we are being invited into this sacred, intimate relationship between Jesus and his Father. As Nigel Wright puts it, it's a, it's a very different experience being in the presence of an orchestra and having the music happen all around you. It's very different from listening to music on the radio or through your phone. It's a live experience. And Jesus begins this prayer with a celebration, glorify. That word glorify and glory occurs quite a few times in these few short verses. There's also a request. Glorify your son, that your son may glorify you. Jesus has set his face towards Jerusalem for the last time. He is moving towards the end of his mission. And so he is celebrating the fact that his work is almost done. Following this passage, uh, the very next day, Jesus will face trial and torture and execution. But he has completed the task. He has spoken the words that the Father gave him. Now the request is that he, Jesus, be lifted up, take his place beside the Father, exalted over all the world. And the age to come has truly started. The age to come, when all things will be joined together in Christ. Eternal life starts here and now, not in the future. It starts here and now because of Jesus, because of what he achieved through the cross. His death and resurrection leads to new life. And our belief in him gives us new life. This is our hope. We believe and trust in Jesus, the Messiah, the Saviour. When Jesus completed the final victory over death, all those who follow him, trust and believe in him, that he came from his Father God, and that he has revealed God's character and purpose. We who believe have eternal life now. And if you read on in John 17, you'll see that through this relationship between God the Father and God the Son, this so intimate and trusting relationship is not exclusive. We are invited in. That's just incredible to think about. We are invited in to this, this relationship. Jesus the Son, God the Father, and us. Tonight, let that give you joy and peace. Whoever we are, wherever we are, 
we are invited into a relationship with God. Intimacy with the Father through faith in Jesus Christ, sealed in us by the Holy Spirit. Amen. So we turn to our prayers. And in our prayers, I would like to, in your imagination, I'd like you to follow me round my garden, round four particular rose bushes that I have in my garden. And the first rose is called Tranquility. It's a creamy white rose. Tranquility, the call to be still in the presence of God. So let's just be quiet for a moment and let our senses subside into stillness so that we can be open to the intimacy that God is in inviting us into. As I walk round, the next rose that I come to actually has the name Grace. It's a delicate apricot colour. So let's remember the grace of God, that through the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross, we are called to come back to God. Repent and know that we are forgiven. And we stand in the gap and pray for the grace of God in our world. Let's give to God what is happening in the world tonight. Let's pray for those areas savaged by war violence, oppression. Pray for those tonight who lack food and shelter. Pray for those mourning the death of a loved one through war, especially for those in the Middle East and in Ukraine. Pray for those countries that are not in the news and yet where people are suffering because of unjust regimes and governments. Lord God, move, we pray, by the power of your Holy Spirit and change the hearts and minds of all those intent on violence and war. We pray especially for the leaders of the nations, that they rule in justice and for the good of all the people in their care. And a prayer specifically given on the Church of England website. Almighty God, from whom all thoughts of truth and peace proceed, kindle, we pray, in the hearts of all the true love of peace and guide with your pure and peaceable wisdom those who take counsel for the nations of the earth, that in tranquility your kingdom may go forward till the earth is filled with the knowledge of your love. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us turn now to pray for all the leaders of churches and Christian fellowships in our country and especially here in Lancashire. On our monthly prayer letter today, we are called to pray for our own bishops in, here in the Blackburn Diocese, Bishops Philip, Jill, 
and Joe. Let us pray for God's strength and wisdom for them, and that they may know his joy in their hearts. We pray for our Vicar Dave, for Ali and Josh, praying God's blessing on them. And on our curate, LJ, and on David, our Associate Minister, and Alison. And we pray particularly this week for Steve and Lisa Haskett as they go out to India and for all the ministry that is happening there with Life Association. Lord, grant them safe journey. And give them the blessing of seeing the power of the Holy Spirit at work in India, in that country. Thank you, Father, for all those who have responsibilities in leading your people. May your kingdom come. May your will be done. In Jesus' name. Amen. And so now I move to the next rose. And its name is Compassion. It's pink apricot in colour. So let's give to God in prayer all those known to us who are ill at home or in hospital at this time. And as I say these next words, I will leave a space for you to say the name of someone you know who needs this prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we pray for your will to be done. We ask for your healing touch for Lord in your mercy hear our prayer we thank you God for all those who show compassion to others for all those working in the care services in residential and independent living homes for all those who work in our NHS and in the emergency services, in hospitals and hospices. Lord, grant them your strength. Grant them your joy in Jesus' name. And the last rose is called Peace. It's yellow edged with pink. For ourselves and all those we love, let us pray. Lord Jesus, give us the peace that the world cannot give and keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God. You know our heart's desires, all our worries and all our joys. Lord Jesus, be very close to each and every one of us tonight, we pray. Amen. And let's use the words that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Visit this place, O Lord, we pray, and drive far from it the snares of the enemy. May your holy angels dwell with us and guard us in peace. And may your blessing be always upon us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And so as we come to the end of our prayer time together tonight, if you did light a candle at the beginning, please do remember to extinguish it before you go to bed. And so in peace, we will lie down and sleep. For you alone, Lord, make us dwell in safety. 
Abide with us, Lord Jesus, for the night is at hand, and the day is now past. As the night watch looks for the morning, so do we look to you, O Christ. And for those who know our usual blessing, from Numbers chapter 6, let us use these words to bless each other tonight. The Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord turn his face towards us and give us peace. Amen.